Hello everyone, my name is Anton and I'm here to tell you about the latest and greatest in Kotlin 1.9.20. Over the past few releases the Kotlin team put much effort into unifying the language features across the target platforms, rewriting memory manager for Kotlin native and improving the tools for working with multiple platforms and sharing the code across the project targets. You can probably guess what I'm hinting at. Yes, the release is about Kotlin multi-platform projects. The KMP is getting stable. But before we go into the central theme of this release, let's take a look at the news about the K2 compiler. The work on K2 compiler continues. In Kotlin 1.9 we announced the basic support for Kotlin native, which made it available for Kotlin multi-platform projects. Starting with 1.9.20, the K2 compiler for all the targets is now in beta. Beta means that you can use it and we will do our best to minimize the migration issues for you. It's almost done and the user feedback is especially important right now, but it still is not 100% finished, so the changes are possible, including the ones based on your feedback. You can enable the K2 compiler by adding the Kotlin experimental try K2 property into the Gradle properties file, or by setting the language version to 2.0 in your build.gradle.kts file. In this release, we also added experimental support for capped compiler plugin. This means we only suggest using it for evaluation purposes. To enable capped plugin support, you need to add the corresponding property to the Gradle properties file. Now, with K2 reaching the beta status, your feedback is really important. Give it a try and share your feedback. You can join the K2 Early Adopters channel in Kotlin Slack, report your findings to Utrack, and share usage statistics in the ID. Now let's talk about Kotlin multi-platform projects. During the evolution of multi-platform support in Kotlin, we constantly experimented and added new features and introduced new Gradle plugins and project modes you probably remember the last big update, the introduction of the hierarchical project structure. We still have a lot of ideas for improvements here and there, but for the last several months we have focused on stabilizing what we already have. The reason for this is simple, KMP was an experimental state for years. It was announced in Kotlin 1.2 in 2017 and at some point you just have to stop experimenting and make what you already have stable. So in Kotlin 1.9.20 we are announcing Kotlin multi-platform projects as a stable feature. Briefly, stable means two things. First, you can use it in production. Not that the beta state of the Kotlin multi-platform project support has stopped folks around the world adopting the technology, but now it's official. Secondly, we commit to evolving the technology in a backwards compatible way. We divided all our features into two groups. The stable features, the most popular and needed features for the platform, and the experimental features, those are the advanced features that could change significantly in the following versions. For the stable group, we are focused on ensuring that these features will work reliably and that we can evolve them in a backwards compatible manner. For the experimental group, we put all the stuff under opt-ins, so it would be evident to the user that these advanced features are subject to change. In IntelliJ IDEA, the experimental functionality should be enabled explicitly under the advanced settings by clicking that Enable Experimental Multi-Platform IDE Features checkbox. For this release, the main goal was to stabilize the internals, the compiler support, the language features, etc. But we still want this technology to be easier to adopt, so we put some effort into improving the Gradle plugin. Thanks to the default hierarchy template, it's now easier to configure the project. The Kotlin Gradle plugin automatically creates the shared source sets for the popular multi-platform scenarios. So you don't need to create the source sets structures manually anymore. All you need to do is to set up the targets and the predefined source set structure will be created automatically for you. As you can see, 
For the same project there is a lot less configuration required now. We also provide the static accessories for the source sets from the default hierarchy template, so you get a nicer completion and more fluent DSL syntax. We also improved the diagnostics for the configuration phase of the plugin. If you attempt to access a source set that doesn't exist because you haven't declared the respective target, you get a warning during the project import and it will tell you exactly what you have to fix. What if you need to add an additional source set that the default hierarchy template does not provide? For instance, I'd like to add an intermediate source set that depends on the common source set and I want the JVM and macOS source sets to depend on the new source set. For this, I have to declare the new source set, then configure it to depend on the common source set, and configure the other source sets by using the depends on function. Additionally, I need to adjust the hierarchy by reapplying the template explicitly with the apply default hierarchy template function. And now I have the new hierarchy for the source sets in my project. To improve bootstrapping the new Kotlin multi-platform projects, we are launching the new web-based wizard at kmp.jetbrains.com. It is the first implementation of the Kotlin multi-platform project wizard and the wizard covers the most popular use cases for now. The new wizard has a distributed architecture. It allows us to provide a unified backend and different frontends, with the web version being the first step. We are planning to implement the new wizard for the IDs as well, for IntelliJ IDEA, Android Studio, and Fleet. And we are planning to provide a command line tool in the future as well. This is all I wanted to reveal about Kotlin Multiplatform at this time. But there are more videos coming about KMP on this channel, so stay tuned and subscribe in order not to miss the new interesting videos about the technology. Now let's talk about the updates in Kotlin Native. In Kotlin 1.9.0 we announced the preview of a new custom memory allocator as a preview feature and opt-in was required to enable it. Now we have collected enough feedback to ensure that the new memory allocator can be enabled by default, so you don't need to worry about enabling it via the compiler arguments. Instead, if you still find that it doesn't perform well, you can opt in for the previous behavior by setting the compiler argument to use me malloc allocator instead. Improving the new memory manager was a priority for the team throughout several release cycles, and we continue to improve the performance of the new Kotlin native memory manager. The new memory manager was introduced in Kotlin 1.6.20 and became default in 1.7.20. Since then, it has received a number of updates uh, and performance improvements and has become stable. Now it's time to complete the deprecation cycle and remove the legacy memory manager and if you are still using it, please follow the migration instructions in our documentation. The changes in linking against the third-party code in Kotlin Native were introduced in Kotlin 1.9.0. The Kotlin Native compiler replaces the call size to the missing symbols with a throw instruction and adds an error message that will be thrown at runtime. The compiler detects the linkage issues between the third-party Kotlin libraries and reports the errors. You might encounter such issues if the author of a third-party Kotlin library makes an incompatible change in an experimental APIs that another third-party Kotlin library consumes. For instance, if my application uses a library that was compiled against some other third-party library, and I start using a newer version of that other library where some symbols might be removed, then this would produce a runtime error. So the overall behavior is now very similar to what we have in the JVM world. In this release, we improved how the Kotlin native compiler handles linkage issues in Kotlin libraries. The error messages now include more readable declarations uh, using the signature names instead of hashes, so it's easier to find and fix the issue. The compiler detects linkage issues in silent mode by default, 
you can adjust the settings in your project by adding the corresponding compiler arguments. Starting with Kotlin 1.9.20, the Kotlin native backend calls static initializer on a companion object in class constructors. The behavior is now in line with Kotlin JVM where the companion object is initialized when the corresponding class is loaded or resolved, which matches the semantics of a Java static initializer. In this release, we also introduce a new compile time optimization for Kotlin native. The compilation of the Klib artifacts into native code is now partially incremental. When compiling Kotlin source code into a native binary in debug mode, the compilation goes through two stages. First, the source code is compiled into Klib artifacts, and then Klib artifacts along with the dependencies are compiled into a binary. To optimize the compilation time for the second stage, the team has already implemented the compiler caches for dependencies. They are compiled into native code only once, and the result is reused every time a binary is compiled. But Klib artifacts built from the project sources were always fully recompiled into native code at every project change. With the new incremental compilation, if the Klib artifact produced by the project module changes only partially, just a part of Klib is further recompiled into a binary. This is an experimental feature, so to enable it, add the following option to your gradle.properties file. WebAssembly support in Kotlin is in its early stages, but there is some interesting progress that we can talk about. In this release, we have included support for Fuzzy, a system interface for WebAssembly platform. Wasi support makes it easier for you to use Kotlin Wasm outside of the browsers, for example, in the server-side applications by offering the standardized set of APIs for accessing the system resources. To run Kotlin Wasm applications, you need a VM that supports uh, Wasm GC, for example, Node.js or Dino, and there is no stable release of those runtimes at the moment of uh, me recording this video but it's coming. There are snapshot builds that include support for Wasm GC and it's possible to experiment with Kotlin running on WebAssembly runtime. So related to that, we had to update the Gradle DSL in the Kotlin Gradle plugin. There is a new Wasm Wasi target and the former Wasm target is now renamed to Wasm GS. All right, folks, uh, that's it for this video. Let me know in the comments if you liked it or not. Stay tuned for the updates and subscribe to the channel and have a nice Kotlin.